The For Honor community is probably the first video game community I've really been a part of and been invested in. It's been a wild ride, but each up and down helps define the community and where it is today, for better or for worse. Over time, the For Honor community though has given us a lot to be proud of. Incredibly talented artists, devoted content creators, passionate tournament hosts, and even a clothing line inspired by everyone's favorite samurai assassin, the Orochi. Today's video would not be possible without the support from the awesome For Honor inspired Project Orochi. Project Orochi has plenty of samurai inspired clothing, with shirts featuring the titular hero's Riptide Strike and even Nabushi's Viper's Retreat. My favorites though are the Sekiro styled Shinobi tee and the two tone hoodies that actually mimic the OG samurai mythic outfit colors. Now, if you're thinking, but Marco, this is weeb stuff! You'll be pleasantly surprised to hear that all the products are entirely made in the USA, and it doesn't get any less weeb than AMERICA! So, if you want to rep some awesome For Honor inspired gear, make sure you use this promo code at checkout when clicking the link down below to check out Project Orochi. Again, big thank you to Project Orochi for partnering with me on this video. Many people think that your chosen faction defines who you are in the community of For Honor. Knights are meme-loving fanatics, Vikings are unstoppable winning machines, and Samurai are weebs. Then, there are those who think it's your chosen hero or main that defines you, with relying on top-tier or quote-unquote broken heroes being frowned upon, fast quote-unquote spammy characters being a crutch to make up for lack of skill, slow quote-unquote spammy characters also being a crutch to make up for lack of skill, and using underpowered heroes makes you a god amongst men and we should all worship the sweat-stained chair that you sit on. Quieres? It's even more confusing when you play Centurion because 50% of the players think he needs a buff and the other 50% want him nerfed. I think he should just use his Centfinity Gauntlet and snap the latter half, but hey, that's just me. Oh, and Wu Lin bad. Nobody likes them. Going even further under the microscope, we see playstyles also defining your character and integrity as a human being. Utilizing your surrounding area for ledge and environmental kills is seen as low skilled and your trash can't fight me fair. And abiding by the oh so revered honor code means you're an idiot for not ganking and winning the fight by any means necessary. Because you like following made up rules in a video game where how you fight likely has no real consequence on your life outside of video games. Even the way you play dress up with your heroes and act with them outside of combat will lead to players scrutinizing you. Darker outfits and effects combined with the too edgy for me slow walk makes you look really cool if you're 12. Emote spamming is considered funny if you're the one doing it and BM if it's being done to you. Oh, that stands for bad manners you filthy casual. Why don't you know that in other basic terms like GB, CC, and CC? Or the exact timings and abilities of each move in the game. What is wrong with you? Yeah, expect a lot of that in the chat too. Speaking of chat, there's quick chat so even console players can get in on the fun. There's four options which can be spammed up to three times in quick succession. Thanks. Sorry. Good fight. And wow. All of which are definitely not used the way Ubisoft intended. Or are they? And you know what? I think that pretty much covers it. For the in-game aspect at least, the For Honor community doesn't just exist in-game, no, there are tens of thousands of us all over this beautiful thing called the internet. I'm gonna do an internet! A place of bad opinions, unfunny memes, Hamburger. and polite discussion. One such place where this discourse involves For Honor is of course on the official For Honor subreddit. This is the easiest place to share your thoughts and opinions even if they are usually really, really bad takes. But hey, that's okay, because we are a totally inclusive community that doesn't main shame or fail to understand mechanics of the game. You can also feel free to share funny memes, just make sure they're, oh, I don't know, related to For Honor in more ways than just the title of the post. One of my favorite takes online is how people are upset that we keep getting free new cosmetics added to the game instead of hero overhauls every week. To represent why art teams aren't in charge of hero balancing or programming, I'm gonna draw for the rest of the video to show why I am not an art or animation channel. Now don't mistake this for me saying that I agree with everything Ubisoft has done with For Honor. I would like to see much more frequent and significant balancing, and changes that affect one hero, such as the removal of crowd control like Raider Stampeding Charge being interruptible, and Lawbringer's Impaling Charge also now being interruptible. Those kind of changes should be done across the board. 
not one hero at a time, as this does strive after all to be a fighting game. Now I only say strive because it does and doesn't fit a lot of norms consistent in most fighting games. It's a very unique concept, and there's a good reason why we haven't seen any other AAA studios take on a game like For Honor. Partly because just making it probably was a pain in the butt, I don't know, I'm not a video game programmer. And realistically as well, it's a more niche genre, especially compared to fellow Ubisoft title Rainbow Six Siege. And as such, it unfortunately probably gets less resources dedicated to it. But I digress. The main reason I brought this up is because over the course of the game's lifespan, the community very vocally on Reddit and the now no longer weekly dev streams would criticize the team week after week after week after week. I've honestly never seen a fanbase of a game hate the game so much yet continue playing it. I'd often hear how they were blaming the developers for letting the game die, and yes, arguably a lack of balancing will do that, but being toxic shitholes online doesn't exactly warmly invite new players either. Regardless, at one point early in For Honor's lifespan, a blackout was planned, by the community of course. Blackout referring to supporting a game you like by not playing the game. Makes sense. Being honest, I actually can't remember if it went through. I'm pretty sure it did, but it, not on the scale that it was supposed to. It was a much smaller number of people that partook in it, because the 400 dev team decided to address a lot of the concerns that the player base had. Eventually, we got an increase in steel gain, more open and honest communication from the devs regarding their opinion on balance changes and other aspects of the game, and the eventual removal of the player-to-player -player connection system, and the inclusion of dedicated servers. There's also a huge disconnect between the quote-unquote normies of the For Honor subreddit and the competitive community. The casual community, and I'm just gonna call them that because it's easier to identify A and B, it doesn't affect everyone, please don't get so offended or butthurt over it. The casual community generally likes to be able to react to incoming attacks, usually citing it's already hard enough to react to attacks on console, where the majority of the player base is. Whereas the competitive community recognizes that quote-unquote unreactable attacks are mandatory to prevent a turtle meta and force reading your opponent and using mind games, as opposed to having an intense staring contest with your opponent. I don't know about you, but that's definitely why I bought For Honor. This misunderstanding between the two groups, combined with casual players seeing competitive players as holier-than-thou, arrogant exploitive users, and competitive players seeing casual players as needing to get good, adapt to change, and realize that For Honor should be treated more like a fighting game, has created a lot of friction between the two player bases, and, in my eyes, has caused less support and interest for tournaments than there could have been. Thankfully, the upcoming release of Spectator Mode looks to reinvigorate interest in the competitive scene, something that I personally think is long overdue, but I'm nonetheless extremely excited for. Now you might be thinking at this point, Jesus Mark, I'm getting radiation poisoning just from hearing how toxic the For Honor community is. But it's really not this bad. Yes, like any community, there is a vocal group of doomsayers who live to hate a game they play so much, which really doesn't make sense, hating a game that you play because why are you playing it in the first place? Humans are weird and I'm not going to try to understand them. This definitely isn't the most toxic gaming community out there. We need to remember that League of Legends exists. And just mentioning that game has caused all the hair on my head to fall out. That's why I wear a hat so much now. We also need to remember that fighting games tend to bring out the worst in people. Fighting games tend to be so much more personal and heated because of the skill and knowledge involved in being good at them. And people who lack the ability to control their emotions in a rational manner will always resort to outbursts online, be it angry posts, hate mail, or posting on the For Honor Rant subreddit. The truth is, I honestly think that everyone who is invested in the game or active in the community just wants what is best for the game in their mind. The problem occurs when everyone has different opinions on what that is. I think the problem is a lack of education or lack of caring to educate, be it in playstyles, hero knowledge, or even general facts like 60 frames per second not being as much of an advantage as a majority of console players think. Everything's so clear! I, I can see! I can fight! It's a meme and nothing beyond that. If you do want to better educate yourself on For Honor, I strongly suggest that you check out Freeze's channel. I promise, if you want to know more about heroes' punishes, frame data, or just general intricacies about the game, his channel is the best place to learn. Now Freeze isn't the only amazing member of the community that I'd like to shout out. Fragment, fellow For Honor Ubisoft star player, actually designed this amazing thumbnail for the video, and honestly I think really helps tie the whole video together. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to Infectious Beef for sending me clips and recording some with me. You can check out his channel down below. 
I would happily go on for hours about all the different content creators, but I know that inevitably I would accidentally leave out one or two and I'd feel like an idiot for doing so. The best part about the content creator community is there's content creators out there for everyone. If you enjoy awesome art, if you enjoy competitive gameplay, if you just enjoy someone talking and playing the game, there is someone out there for you, and that is pretty awesome. But don't get me wrong, you don't have to be a content creator to be an outstanding member of the community. There are so many talented, dedicated, and wonderful people that just want to talk about the game, be it online on the subreddit, in the discord, or on Amino. There's people that just want to showcase their super cool outfits that they spent hours grinding for, emblems that they created. They make stellar game mode or balance suggestions, and hey, some of them actually create funny memes. I didn't know that was possible. It's honestly a community I don't regret for a second becoming invested in. Some of the best people I know online, I've met through For Honor. If you can get through the naysayers that lie on the surface of For Honor's community, you'll find inside of it are passionate players in the various subreddits, discords, Twitch and YouTube channels, and beyond. Just like the knights, vikings, and samurai, our difference in opinions may be what define and separate us, but it is our love for battle that brings us together and makes us stronger. So Marco, why did you make this video? You know what? I don't know really. <laughs> Initially I just wanted to take some jabs at posts I'd seen in the For Honor subreddit that just, in my opinion, failed to understand the game and were abysmally garbage takes, and it caused me to just look at the For Honor community as a whole. I know I started it on a negative foot, but let's face it, from the outside, not just the For Honor community, but any video gaming community. The negative is the first thing you're probably going to see because they're that more vocal. It isn't until you get through it all that you meet some more decent folks. I think the For Honor community's journey and my part throughout it have been some of the best times of my life. I've been fortunate enough to be named a Ubisoft star player and meet some of the developers and fellow players at PAX West last year. I was also very lucky to be in Montreal this past week for the Year 3 Season 3 reveal, where me getting destroyed by the other players wasn't the most embarrassing part of that trip. <laughs> I even started a cult and caused a civil war because of a stupid volcano! And again, as I mentioned, some of my closest friends online are from the For Honor community, and I wouldn't trade being a part of it or this experience for anything. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, then maybe you should subscribe and ring the bell so that next time I release a video, you can get beamed straight to your eyes right away. If you want more videos of me talking like this, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna probably stick to the memetage format from here on out that I'm more known for. And if you really love the content I make, maybe you should consider supporting me on Patreon. There's some cool benefits like a special role in chat in my Discord, as well as getting named at the end of my video because you're a top tier supporter, such as Wearinghide, Kerfungles, and Jason Yipya. That is all for now, I will see you on the next video, and thank you again for listening and watching, stay awesome.